I always wanted to be a journalist. I came from a very low socioeconomic family. So as soon as I saw Yana Vent on television, I thought I want to be her. A lot of women in the era when I went through the media had to be forged by fire. Masculine drinking and bullying cultures, lots of groping and grabbing. It was an incredibly difficult workplace to survive in. I was the person more likely to step back and say, no, I'm really happy to be the deputy. I'm happy for someone else to lead. Because with leadership comes a lot of risk. And when you grow up as a, with good girl syndrome, you don't think you're the person who deserves to be in that position. My feminism was galvanised after being sidelined after returning from maternity leave about 11 years ago because I saw firsthand the kind of thing that one in two women in Australia goes through in the workplace every day. Made me realise that as a privileged woman in the media with a voice, I can actually do something about discrimination rather than just talking about it. We have all the data to show that inequality is rife across society in the workplace. We've got to call out that sexist language when we see it and when we hear it because it provides a base for much worse behaviour. The best way to influence hearts and minds is through storytelling. People who I would not have expected to support me in what I do have come up to me at barbecues and said, Thank you for what you and your colleagues are doing for our daughters and our granddaughters because you can't change something that you can't see. When I was approached to lead Women in Media, which is a national networking and mentoring program, I grasped it because I thought what a great opportunity to learn those practical leadership skills that we now pass on to other women. We were very focused on mentoring and I found it to be incredibly symbiotic. I've really had to work on my language, for example. I use a lot of sorry and just and I'm lucky and I'm fortunate. All those words that really eat away at our credibility and gravitas and our confidence. I do think that within a workplace that does have sponsorship, that is much more powerful. Because mentoring's great, but sponsorship takes it to the next level. Women have been forced out of my industry because of sexual harassment and the gender pay gap. Sponsorship physically smashes some of those barriers by bringing someone up, recommending them for a promotion or a job. To pitch our case for us is incredibly powerful. Well, I'd like to see companies and individuals take practical, pragmatic, systemic steps. You can have all the policies and procedures in the world, and I do think that's an important underpinning, but unless you have the culture that comes from the top, and that is reflected in the broader society and reflected in the media that not only mirrors but shapes society, that's where you get the long-term change. The lessons that the women learn hearing from each other's stories in these Women in Leadership Australia courses are incredible. From that, they decided to do their own unique research and create this 100 Days for Change to bring it into the workplace and see what practical, systematic, structural change they could affect over three months. It's exciting to be leading something where we can broaden it out to everybody rather than just the privileged few at the top. Even though Time's Up was started in Hollywood in America with some very wealthy, high profile women, the most sexual harassment in workplaces happens in low paid industries. The history of feminism is not linear, it comes in fits and starts. This protest movement, which is everywhere from the lounge room to the boardroom, will continue strongly for, for years.